Uh, hi, Video Diary. Um, I was uh, trying to write some um, poems, but uh, it's not really coming to me. Um, so I thought I would talk to you a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully that might get me out of my funk a little bit. Um, I haven't been feeling too well either, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I don't think I have the coronavirus, but, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> uh, that would that would stink, but um, I haven't been out anywhere or anything like that. I've been staying safe, so you know. But who knows? Um, today I kind of wanted to. It's just been something on my mind, but I was thinking about the band Remo Drive um, and poetry, of course. But uh, we'll get there. Um, so I have a few notes on this one too, so I'm not so distracted. But I'm going to be distracted because that's what I do. But um, the band Remo Drive, if you don't know about them, they're, uh, they were an emo band, kind of emo, pop punk, that stuff. Kind of not exactly like Pup, but kind of similar to them. Um, uh, uh, you know, that kind of uh, pop punk kind of emo kind of style. Um, but their first album is called Greatest Hits, which is ironic because it's probably their greatest hits. Um, and um, they have a whole um, backstory around, you know, kind of um, their whole band story. So if you're interested in that, there's a video um, by uh, Nate the Mate um, where he talks about Remo Drive and kind of what happened with them and why their sound changed and their kind of reaction to that because they haven't really, um, uh, the fans haven't reacted to it well. And that's not really important. It's kind of tangential to what I want to talk about today. But uh, it's still a little bit relevant, so go watch that video if you're interested. Or if you're just interested in like niche kind of music stuff, you know, it's always cool to, to see stuff like that. At least I'm, I think it's cool. Um, but um, I just started listening to Remo Drive, you know, a couple months ago, so I'm kind of late to it. You know, their first album came out in 2017, they had an album come out in 2019, and then in 2020. Um, Greatest Hits was the album that I kind of started listening to. And I was like, oh, this album is actually pretty good. And I was like, this is this is cool stuff, you know. Um, it's not like a perfect album, right? It's not uh, the greatest um, album ever. It's not even the greatest emo album ever. Um, but it's good. Like, it had a lot of uh, potential, too. Um, and then I listened to their next two albums. It's uh, uh, um, uh, uh, well, Portrait of an Ugly Man is the main one that I listened to. They have an album in between that that came out in 2019 um, that I listened to a couple tracks and I just kind of fell off of it really hard. And then uh, Portrait of an Ugly Man, I, I listened to a couple tracks and then fell off of it really hard too. Um, and there are a couple reasons for that, but uh, only only one of them that's really relevant to, to kind of our discussion today. Um, like I said, if you want to know more, um, Nate the Mate, his video kind of articulates my, my feelings uh, about that too. Um, but Remo Drive, to me, kind of started out as this band, you know, that was had this energy to it, right? And um, they had this kind of uh, not quite unique sound, but a unique take on a, a, on a, um, uh, a, a common rock sound, right? Um, emo and pop punk. And, and so... Um, you know, and I'm always like, I always like that kind of stuff, um, you know, that's, that's a little bit angsty and a little bit snarky and a little bit, um, rude or, or, uh, and then there's like a kind of sloppiness or an edge to it. I like that. And I enjoy that about music. Um, uh, I enjoy that about poetry too. Um, but, um, their next two albums to me kind of lost a lot of that. Um, they sound a much more generic um, kind of rock sound, especially their newest album, Portrait of an Ugly Man. It sounded like a lot of um, like early 2010s kind of emo stuff, or not emo stuff, indie stuff, um, and lost a lot of that energy. Um, and, uh, um, and for me, uh, and, and cleaning up their sound and cleaning up their lyrics didn't do any favors because it kind of revealed the, 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 the lyrical shortcomings of, of, of some of the music and, and just the, the, the playing, you know. Um, they always had this, uh, this edge to them before, but it's, with all that sanded off, right, it just doesn't sound as, as unique or interesting. 
and I think part of that is because they, they wanted to mature their sound, right? But um, maturing your sound doesn't mean that you drop everything that, you know, got you the fan base or, or made you the artist that you are. I mean, because to me, fan base isn't so important, right? What to me is important is that, um, you know, that any kind of artist has this kind of um, style and then they're maneuvering through it in ways that is... Um, uh, growth towards a unique self, a unique sound, a unique look, a unique read, right? Um, and so Remo Drive to me, they started out really strong, but they didn't explore that sound. Um, and I think like you name a, a great artist and they start with a definitive style or a definitive sound, and then they take it from there, they grow it from there. And maybe they grow past the original sound, but lots of times you can still see bits of it in that, um, in the new work and I don't think you can really see that in Remo Drive and I was thinking about that in in in, in the case of poetry right um, because for me it always comes back to poetry um, and I was thinking about you know um, writers like uh, John Berryman who who whose early kind of uh, style was really just kind of copying Hopkins and uh, um, and Yeats W.B. Yeats and uh, um, uh, Oh, like, why did I forget his name? Um, Gerard Manley Hopkins, sorry. I, he's one of my favorite poets, and I forgot his name. Um, but you can, in his early work, it's like really derivative, right? But you can see the edge of talent there, right? And then he kind of broke out with, uh, in my opinion, with homage to Mistress Bradstreet, um, and then really broke out with the dream songs, but he never lost that. You can always see Yeats in there. You can always see Hopkins in there. He didn't, uh, he didn't totally shed that, but he grew from it. He grew it in a more experimental, more interesting way, but you could always see that foundation there, right? And so he didn't uh, just totally throw off the original stuff, even though it was derivative, right? He learned from it and moved into it and grew out of it, right? And so many great poets um, have that, right? Um, uh, I think of, of Blake's stuff, right? Um, which is like really um, kind of romantic lyric stuff and then he moves into his prophetic. Um, I think of uh, another poet that I... Um, uh, that I that I really like um, uh, nowadays, and um, uh, they have a book called uh, Homie that j you know just came out, and Denise Smith, and and um, their early work was really kind of influenced a lot by um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, like a oh, why can't I think of the name like competitive poetry, slam poetry. Gosh, I'm, I told you I'm a little bit out of it today. I'm sorry. Um, and then their their later work like still has that slam poetry um, edge to it that 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 kind of sound but they they have um, grown and experimented beyond that into something that um, incorporates slam poetry elements but it's also something new and and interesting and um, and they have never uh, you know they haven't totally grown out of uh, that um, original influence right but they've incorporated into it as as a full grown and matured poet right um and even somebody um as experimental as um you know uh just um like uh let's see i mean even somebody like paul salon who who um i i we talked about i talked about in the last in one of the earlier videos right or a poet like Susan Howe, who I also talked about in an earlier video, um, you can see where the the lyric has influenced their um, their poetry, but they've grown into a more experimental edge. But they there is still that um, lyrical influence to a lot of their poetry, and I think one thing that we as human beings sometimes we can be embarrassed by those early things, those early interests, those early. Um, obsessions right but those things really form who we are and no matter um, how much we want to kind of shed those things um, we we still have that foundation there um, I think I just hit my microphone so I hope that I didn't make too bad of a noise oh well um, that's the the gist of these videos is that they're really kind of off the cuff and you know things happen uh, but but um, you know, bringing it back to, to Remo Drive, I think that they, they kind of repudiated that sound too much, right? They were, um, 
the, in their quest to mature, right? They they um, didn't really mature. They just kind of shed that original sound for something that um, was just uh, uh, um, following others, right? When um, you know, uh, I think another great example of 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 um, of that is in the arts. Somebody like Pablo Picasso, um, who 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 um, grew into this abstract style, but would stay in certain styles, even though he had so many different styles in his career. He'd stay cubist, you know, for as long as it he needed to, and then he would move to a new style, right? But there was always elements incorporated from these other styles into his next work. Um, or uh, elements that were working against his previous style into his new work, right? Um, and so I think that's really important as a poet, as a writer, as an artist, that you, you don't necessarily need to be embarrassed of your earlier work, right? You don't need to be embarrassed of yourself and think of yourself just as an immature um, person then, right? And maybe, of course, we all mature, right? We all grow, hopefully. Um, but what you need to do is look for the things that succeeded in that. And then move that your art forward, right? Utilizing those things from the past that were successful, but also realizing that you can experiment and grow and 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 build on that foundation, right? There's no need to tear down that foundation, um, which I guess is kind of self-helpy, but whatever. Uh, I guess I need that now, video diary. 